Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to talk about how I modified Grimm and how you could potentially modify your own animatronic to be servo operated. I've already done another video explaining how I make custom servos. So if you wanted to convert another prop like this one or Jack into being servo operated, I've developed a technique for turning regular six volt motors that are on most of these animatronics into servos so that then you can reproduce movements precisely and be able to get more fluent lifelike movement. Uh, the hardest part for Grimm is getting wires to go from his head down to whatever controller you have. Unfortunately, the original board that they used for Grimm had a four uh, prong plug. And my theory was it's probably power ground and some sort of signal, potentially two power wires, a signal on a ground. It's hard to say exactly what it was, but basically they had a controller chip in his head and one in his waist. And basically it had a digital signal that it would send from here up to here to actually animate the servos for his eyes and his neck. Unfortunately, I was not able to hack that original controller. So what I did is I had to wire individual wires going from each of his servos in his head to the controller that I have down here. I'll get into the controllers next. Um, then also for his hip and shoulder, that has a separate eight wire cable. And the reason why I used an eight wire cable is two of the wires are for his speaker and then the other six are for the servos. If you look at a servo, they have three wires. You have power, which is in the middle, and then a signal and a negative. And you can see right there, signal is on the end, negative is down here, and then VS is the positive wire. Um, most times, the positive wire for servos will all be common together on the controller. So for the cable going to his head, just for the sake of making things more simple and the fact it wasn't really even necessary to have separate positive wires, I have two uh, of the plugs here with a positive wire. And I forget which two it was. I think it was one of his eyeball motors and then the other one was his mouth. So this one here is his mouth and you can see it has the three wires. And then these three are for his neck movements and then those two are for his eyeball movement. Additionally, I did NeoPixels for Grimm's eyes. And so if you want his eyes to be able to change color and be individually addressable, you can do a lot of things with NeoPixels. NeoPixels are cheap, but they also need a signal, positive, and a ground. The NeoPixels are on their own, so those are not affected by the other wiring here. So if the servos ever needed an extra boost of power, it won't affect the eyes at all. Also, the reason why I actually wired a positive wire for his waist and his arm is because those are larger motors and they need more power on demand. You can also do things like adding in capacitors, uh, which I did for his arm, so that you can try and give it an extra boost of power if it needs to move upward quickly because it uh, is very heavy to move this plastic arm up. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. His eyes are a very big ordeal. Um, mine, I had to cut one of them open and the other one I was luckily able to just loosen the glue and pop open and remove the original LEDs and change it. Um, I could do a video in the future if everyone's interested showing how I actually produced 
his NeoPixel eyes because they're definitely an impressive effect. I'll just go ahead and show quick. When hinges creak in doorless chamber. How they actually change color. When hinges... Uh, so those are definitely nicer than just having ones that are either on or off. Because then you can do things like... Uh, you can have them be on red. So, uh, NeoPixel eyes are definitely a recommendation on my part, but you'll need a controller that does NeoPixels and the servos. Uh, this controller, I'd say, is definitely a good purchase. It's a Servo DMX made by Fright Ideas. I'll put a link to this controller in the description. These cost about $160, and basically there's a few different options you could do. This controller actually has the ability to have just an audio signal come in, and it will audio, uh, it'll basically audio sense, and so if you have an audio file that's just talking, it will try and puppeteer the mouth, and it can also usually do some neck movements and stuff automatically. I haven't tried that feature on this controller, so I have, I don't really know for sure how good it looks. I know, though, that um, custom animating it is definitely gonna be a better route because you'll get immediate uh, reproducible, uh, signals versus having ones that are sort of auto-generated. Um, but if you wanted to just simply wire Graham and have him talk with an audio file that you provide, you could probably do the auto-talk feature and just wire up an auxiliary cable for like an MP3 player and just have him talking. So that's definitely an option. The other thing to do, though, is get DMX, which are these wires, and have a larger controller such as this. This controller costs about $400, and you can have an SD card. It also manages audio, because that controller down there does not do anything with audio. So if you wanted to have him auto talking you would need to also provide an amplifier and stuff to have uh, him actually speak um, so here's the DMX output and here's the audio output I put an amplifier in here just to have it all easy and close inside of this controller board um, but basically this controller you can animate from your computer and just have an SD card with all the different files. This particular controller can have eight different scenes. So you can see these are the different inputs. And within those scenes, you can have seven sub scenes. And so then if you trigger number one, you can have different uh, audio files each time it plays. So that's what I actually did for Scene seven. I reprogrammed Grimm's original audio. And so that I just simply had his original controller board and I played the audio into the computer, and then I made an audio file and an animation file for the controller here, so that if you see when it's triggered, you best be careful where you tread on this dark night. the lightning you in the background. Um, let's see it on the next scene. The lightning there is also programmed by that controller. So basically, if you wanted to also have lighting and other things in sync with Grimm, this controller is a very nice option. 
because uh, I have my chandeliers here animated by this with those. And the third LED right there is uh, the lightning lights. And you can also do relays, which if anyone's seen my Billy Bass talking, uh, that's also controlled by this. So there's definitely a huge variety of stuff you can do with this controller, but it is expensive. So, uh, yeah, all in all for the setup that I have, you're probably looking at $600 minimum if you do all the labor yourself because, uh, just the cost of all the controllers and wire, um, definitely though, to start off this controller here for 160, you could get Grimm up and running with some custom audio files and stuff. And it would definitely still be a neat thing for your Halloween party or something. Um, and then later on, if you wanted to upgrade to having a master controller, so you could have specific timed events. Um, Fripe Ideas makes a few different controllers. One of them is the Boobox Flex Max. This is the most expensive one that they have currently. I'm sure in the future they'll probably make another one, but currently Boobox Flex Max. This one you can control by uh, this wire to your computer. The upgrade to have the Director Connect is what it's called to be able to program it from your computer is an additional $100. And that is basically so uh, you can live animate and I've done videos showing that in the past, and I'm happy to show more videos on how I actually program. Um, and then Fright Pops also makes, though, so, uh, Fright Ideas, I mean, makes a Boo Box Flex, which has less outputs, but it does still have DMX and audio. So you would still be able to get Grim and everything working just as I have it without really any difference. Um, that one is, I think, about 200-ish, 2 to 300. Um, I'll put, I'll try and put links in the description to the different controllers. Uh, unfortunately, though, I know Fright Ideas is having a chip shortage, so I'm not sure if they'll have controllers available to purchase. Uh, this controller I actually got on eBay, so you can also check secondhand. Sometimes people will sell them. And they're definitely a great item to purchase if you see one get listed. They usually don't last very long on eBay, though. Anyway, I hope this video helps. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the other videos on my channel.